On a cool fall morning in November 1985, a man and a woman paid a visit to the University of Arizona Museum of Art, and they went with a purpose. The couple followed a staff member into the museum, moments before it was scheduled to open at about 9 a.m. They were allowed to enter. It was, after all, a public art museum that welcomed visitors. The man went upstairs immediately. And the woman intercepted one of the security monitors who was about to go on duty upstairs in the stairwell to discuss a painting that might have been hung in the stairwell at the time. As the registrar at the museum, Kristen Schmidt cares for the collection, everything from packing and shipping of works that travel to ensuring the proper temperature of the galleries. Art is essential to being human. It's essential to every part of our life. And so when such a notorious act happens in your backyard, it's, it's unbelievable. It's almost, you know, just too incredible. What did happen isn't clear, as there were no security cameras at the time, and the guard was distracted by the woman on the stairwell, long enough for the man to move up the stairs and into the gallery, where an abstract painting of a woman hung on the wall. I think that somebody really wanted it. That, I think it was a targeted maneuver. While no one who currently works at the museum worked there at the time, the events of that day still echo here. It still haunts us 30 years later in all of the decisions that we make regarding the safety of the collection, access to the collection by the public. That painting still haunts us. The permanent collection at the University of Arizona Museum of Art includes around 6,000 works of mostly European and American fine art, from the Renaissance to modern day. It was one painting in the modern art collection that the couple had their eyes on, a work by the Dutch-American master Willem de Kooning. Willem de Kooning is arguably one of the most important artists of the 20th century. Um, he was born in the Netherlands and he stowed away on a ship and came to the United States in his early 20s. He, along with Jackson Pollock, are really considered the fathers of abstract expressionism. And that arguably is the most significant movement in, in the United States of the 20th century. De Kooning's most celebrated work comes from what is known as his Woman series of paintings, created in the early 1950s which were, in and of themselves, a departure. Because most abstract expressionists were, were completely abstract. It was about paint on the canvas. There was no story, there was no landscape, there was no figure. And um, all of a sudden, Willem de Kooning you know, does this exhibit full of these female figures. And, and people were kind of like, you know, what happened? I thought, I thought we were all doing this abstract thing. So when people say they're not really figures, but they're landscapes, that's true to a certain extent, but they were figures to me. Yeah. Figures maybe in a landscape. So the fact that he returned to the figure when other artists were adamantly abstract, um, that was something that was sort of rogue. And so in that sense, he really stands out. And it was during the creation of his woman series that Willem de Kooning painted Woman Ochre, at his East Village studio in downtown Manhattan. Ochre ranges in color from warm yellow, deep orange to brownish red, and some of those colors can be seen in the painting, thus the name. The eyes in Woman Ochre are very large, um, it has sort of a toothy grin, and the face is almost ghoulish. Her, her torso is very triangular, the breasts are very pronounced, and the line work is very aggressive. It's very gestural, lots of quick, thick paint strokes. Woman Ochre was on display in an upstairs gallery at the museum when the couple in question put their plan into action. Witnesses described them as a white man and woman, he in his 20s and she about 50. The glasses, scarf, and mustache suggest they may have been wearing disguises. While the woman distracted the guard in the stairwell, her accomplice went to work. The 
man cut the painting from the frame, must have rolled it up, rolled up the canvas, put it under his jacket, and the two of them walked out the door. Didn't take very long, it was rather easy. Security probably wasn't at its, at its peak in those years. Dr. Irene Romano is a professor of art history at the University of Arizona. She teaches a course in art plunder that covers ancient looting to modern day museum theft. These works of art go in this black market and for sometimes for long periods of time and get traded for uh, drug sales, arms sales, human trafficking. Art theft is the fourth largest grossing crime in the world after drugs, human trafficking, and arms. I don't know if it ever was hung on somebody's wall or if it's in a bank vault or if it's rolled up and stashed away in a closet. It, it's hard to say with really famous paintings and the amount of press that gets done about them. Um, a lot of times these paintings that were done for hire don't even get displayed, they just get hidden away. Its current value on the legitimate market is hard to know, but another Willem de Kooning painting from the Woman series sold for $137.5 million in 2006, making it one of the most expensive paintings ever sold. Being from a museum in an educational institution, there's no dollar amount we could put on that. It's, um, it's invaluable. The value is incalculable to the art world, to students and faculty at the U of A, to visitors to this museum. It's, uh, it's something that's lost and, and gone, and we've lost our ability to be able to teach from that work of art, to en enjoy it, to inspire people. What is certain is that the 30 by 40 inch painting was cut from its frame, rolled up, and stolen the day after Thanksgiving, 1985. The thieves were seen driving off in a rust-colored sports-type vehicle with black louvers in the back window. It's heartbreaking. I hope it's okay. I hope it hasn't been destroyed already, and, and I do hope it comes back. No matter what the condition it's in, I, I just hope it comes back. We still have the frame that the painting was cut from, and there are still fragments of this painting at the edges. We kept it to memorialize it, and hopefully one day we can reunite it with the painting that belongs in it. Bringing it home to the university would be a huge celebration. There would be nothing more wonderful than to have this painting back on the walls of the museum and to have students and faculty celebrate its return.